Hi and welcome to the next Photoshop video tutorial. In this one we're going to use the quick select tool and then we're going to use the uh, refine edges uh, feature so that we can go ahead and get a more accurate um, selection of hair and facial hair. Alright so the first step is let's uh, make sure we're not working on our original uh, background layer so let's have that selected and press command J that will give us our copy go ahead and I'll call this edit and I'll hide my background just so that I forget that it's there I've got my edit layer selected I'm gonna come over here to the left and I'll choose my quick select tool change the size of my quick select tool and see what I can get Okay, so it does a pretty good job getting most of our subject here. There we go. Um, so now what I want to do is you'll notice, though, that if I zoom in, you'll notice that it misses some of the little tiny details, some of the little tiny hairs. Um, certainly up here at the top, we're missing some of the hairs. So that's where the refine edge um, tool comes in. So basically what you do is with your selection, you're going to come up here and you're going to tap to open refine edge. And we've got four different categories here. The first is view mode. And uh, with view mode, you basically just choose how you want to view what you currently have selected. So the first one is marching ants. It's kind of like what you had. This is, this is a good one uh, because you can see your selection lines. You can see your marching ants, and you can see what you haven't got. Uh, you can choose overlay. Um, and this is kind of my favorite right now uh, because then I can basically see what I what I have and what I what I don't have um, So I can see that I am missing these little bits of hair out here um, On black and on white are very similar. It shows what you have, but The reason why I don't like these is that I can't see how much further Like if I don't have the photograph memorized, I don't know how much hair up here. I'm, I'm, I'm missing um, so to me, it doesn't give me as much information. Same thing with black and white. On layers, it shows kind of a nice clear. I can see the checkerboard background, but still it has that problem. I don't know how much information I'm missing here. And reveal layer, that just shows what I'm missing, but it doesn't show what I currently have selected. So my favorite is uh, overlay. Yours might differ. Okay, so now what you want to do is, now we want to do the actual, the reason why we came here. Uh, so I'm going to tap on this tool right here on the left so that I can go ahead and brush. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brush going around the perimeter of all the hair that Photoshop didn't initially get. And you want to try to be careful here. You don't want to just scribble in. Okay, Photoshop's going to think about it and it's going to give you its result back. Um, from this point on, you can change things like the radius slider and the smart radius option and that will um, generally give you better results. Um, I have found in some photographs where it actually gives you worse results so just make sure you're, you're looking around and you're seeing that as I increase the radius the selection is pulling inward to his face so you can see now over here the ears are being pulled in so um, you know it's not always the best option. Um, I might want to bring that back down. Let's see what smart radius gives us. So smart radius, smart radius is picking up on some of the smaller details, but it's um, still, I'm not noticing much of an addition when I turn on and off smart radius. So um, in this photo, it doesn't seem to be helping out too much. Um, okay, moving on down. You will notice that his ear isn't quite there. Um, I will show how to manually fix that in just a moment. So I can, I can smooth the selection. And what it's doing is it's smoothing the outer edges so I'm not getting those crisp details on his hair. You can see if you smooth it in too much, you're basically losing the tips of the hair. So just be careful about that. Um, feather is going to soften the selection. You can see here it's really softed, or it's really soft um, and, and, and feathery, like a cloud or like an airbrush. So again, be careful about that. Um, sometimes that can work out great. Uh, contrast is going to really sort of intensify or firm up those lines so that can be uh, good. Uh, you can see over here on the bottom left edges it's really um, increasing those lines. Um, and then of course shift edge, if you add to the shift edge you'll see the selection is moving outwards 
uh, I'm getting too much selected. And if I go shift edge to the left, it's bringing the selection inwards, um, which might be nice, but it's not giving me everything that I want. So just play around with those settings and sliders and see what you, uh, what you like, what you think is best. Okay, the last category, um, output. You can turn on de decontaminate colors, and there's a slider amount, and you can go ahead and click on that. And what it's doing is it's going around the perimeter here, and it's trying to really, in this photograph, uh, figure out what's, what's hair, what's part of the head, and what's background, and um, not let any of the background um, influence the selection. So you can, again, you can play around with that, and you can see what gives you a pretty good result. Sometimes turning it on and off um, doesn't do much. Um, last one uh, is output two, and there's a bunch of different, you can make it turn into just a selection, and then you can do other stuff with it. My favorite option is this middle one here, new layer with layer mask. So I'll tap OK, and now you'll see that I've got a brand new layer, so I've got an extra layer, so I've got protection and safety here, um, and I've got a layer mask here that um, I can do with what I want. So notice on the left here, his ear, it's basically, it's, it's pretty hidden. Uh, it's, you, can see the, uh, you can see the checkerboard there. So I'm going to manually fix that. So I'm going to tap on the layer masks to select it. And you'll see that the color white and black are here. So I'm going to choose the color black. And I'm going to go over here to my brush tool. I'm going to choose my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a brush. I'm going to go ahead and choose a soft edge brush change my brush size okay so if I brush with black remember I'm brushing with black so black you'll see if I do black it's basically carving away um, so that was wrong I'm gonna undo um, or I could just do this with black so if you make a mistake if you don't know what color to choose just either choose black or white you'll figure it out immediately so I clearly needed to go with white so I'm going with white now, and I'm brushing it on his cheek, making sure it's all in there. And now as you see, as I come over here to his ear and the side of his face, you can see that it's actually brushing in a bit nicer. Now, of course, I could brush over here with his beard, bring in a little bit more around the edges here. Um, when doing this manually, I like to use a soft edge brush. I find that um, it tends to give me pretty good results. So you could go around manually, um, and I'm just going near the edges here. And so I could do this. Um, a lot of photos you don't need to do this to, so that's nice. Okay, the very last thing I'll do, let me just check on his ear over here. There we go, so I got a little bit more of his earlobe. Okay, so the very last uh, trick or tip that I can recommend is if you take this um, layer and you just press Command J and you duplicate it, you'll notice that it fills out his hair better. So here it is without the duplicate layer, here it is with. And so you can just see that it just adds in a little bit more um, and it's just a nice little touch. So easy to forget, but try to uh, try to remember that when tackling hair and fire and smoke and clouds and stuff like that. Last thing I'll do is I think I'll go ahead and add in a color fill layer. So I'll make a layer. I'll go ahead and I'll drag it underneath uh, my subject. I'll go ahead and choose a color I want to fill with. I think kind of a bright saturated color would be nice kind of this night nice light bright green and I'll go up here to edit fill I want to say fill using the foreground color that's what I have here tap OK and there it is so there's my finished piece looks pretty good um, I could go in and do other stuff to it but sometimes less is more okay that's it um, I hope you enjoyed this and um, Happy cutting out hair, smoke, fire, and other wispy things like that. Good luck.